right? So um, if anybody doesn't know me by this point, I'm Tyler. I'm the study abroad advisor at Webster University's main campus in, in Webster Groves. Um, Mari, Nat, and Christina, just a heads up, we, we have some students on. I know you guys are in various time zones. We have students on from various time zones as well. We have um, some students from our main campus here in Webster Groves, as well as students from our international campus network. So um, good morning, afternoon, evening to everybody. Um, and so I won't spend uh, a lot of time talking. For those of you who are with us, Study Abroad 101, we talked a little bit about uh, what it means to, to study abroad at a, at a partner exchange program as opposed to our international um, network of campuses. But I'll let um, our, our staff from, from our partner universities kind of give you more information. And like I said, we'll take um, kind of questions at the end. So um, I'll turn it over to Christina to talk about Florence. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tyler. This is a really great day. It sounds like you've had a full day of talking about study abroad with students. That's awesome. We have. <laughs> All right. So hi, everyone. My name is Christina Spangler, and I am an education abroad advisor at Kent State University, uh, which is located in Kent, Ohio. So we are just not too, too far away from all of you over in uh, Webster Groves there. Um, so we at Kent State, we have our own center in Florence, Italy. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the program that we have um, that's available to students. Okay, so I always like to start with why study abroad in Florence and why study abroad with Kent State. So Florence, Italy has a lot to offer really any student. Um, the city of Florence itself is almost like an open air museum. There's, you know, beautiful architecture. Every turn you see different history and there's sculptures everywhere. So there's really a lot to explore just within the city of Florence itself. And then of course, as you know, Florence is pretty centrally located within the country of Italy and Italy is very centrally located in Europe. So it also helps um, with students who want to travel to other locations. It's really easy to move around the country. There's an excellent um, train hub that's right in Florence and also um, many uh, airports as well. So it's really easy to travel while you're there. So our Kent State University Center in Florence is really great for a few reasons. So because of our partnership that we have with Webster, it's a really seamless transition for students from Webster to study in Florence. Um, so you're able to be advised on your normal tuition costs, um, the courses, you have a pretty good understanding of how those transfer back to Webster just because we have this great partnership already. The way that you pay for the courses is pretty similar for the program as well, um, so that you can consult with your financial aid counselors and your advisors to see exactly what courses and what kind of financial aid you can use for the program. And lastly, we have a really great um, student group who goes every semester. So typically we have um, about 200 to 250 students who study in Florence. So it's a really great way to meet other students, um, both from Kent State and from really all over the world as well. Um, we do offer assistance with the whole process of preparing to go. Um, so whether that's your flight or arranging housing, we assist you with the visa application process if you require a visa. And we're available for questions kind of the, the entire time along the way. Once you arrive to Florence, we have a full staff at our Florence Center. So there's a lot of really great on-site support. Um, we have amazing faculty in Florence who are world renowned within their fields. Um, so you really have a great community that's right there um, in, from Kent State. But also Kent State has been in Florence for almost 50 years now. So just within the city, we have a really well connected community. Um, and we have the opportunities because of that to offer some really cool internship opportunities, volunteering programs. And it's also just nice to walk into a restaurant and they find out that you're you know, studying with Kent State and they get all excited just because of the great reputation that we have in the city. So this building that you see on the left, um, this is our palace in Florence, Palazzo Vittori. So this is kind of the academic home of our program in Florence. So um, this four story building has really everything that you'll need inside of it. 
there's a pretty expansive library, all of your classrooms. We have studios, labs, um, some lounge areas, places to study all inside of this building. And you can't see it from this photo, but in the center, there is a really nice um, open area, a nice courtyard where students like to sit and eat their lunch and study and just enjoy time with their friends as well. Um, students do have access to Palazzo Vittori 24 seven. So you'll have a key card that gets you into the building after hours. And it is also patrolled by security. So if you needed a quiet study space or you wanted to work in the studio late, um, you do have that access to the building. And I'll talk about classes a little bit later, but um, within Palazzo Vittori, so that's kind of your home base for where you'll be with your classes and things like that. But all of our courses that are offered in Florence are very experiential. So you likely will not spend your entire class time in this building. You'll actually be out in the city, exploring the city, going to museums and learning very hands-on um, in that way. And I will note too, I do have a few links that are um, on the presentation that just have videos or some extra information. Um, so I won't play those now for the sake of time, but um, Tyler can probably send those out to students if you're interested so you can watch those and kind of click through some of the links. All right, so usually one of the biggest questions we get is where are you going to live while you're in Florence? So I mentioned that Kent State does arrange housing on behalf of all of our students. So most of our students live in fully furnished apartments that are kind of scattered throughout the city center of Florence. So we don't have an um, like a high rise apartment building. We don't have on campus dormitories or anything like that. Um, those types of things just simply don't exist in the city center of Florence. Um, so you live in real Italian apartments um, and you live with other study abroad students. So in your specific apartment, you'll be with other Kent State study abroad students, but next door you may have an Italian family or Italian college students. So it really is a nice immersive experience um, and you can really see what it's like to live like a Florentine in the city center. So the apartments are all centrally located. So most of them, I would say, are about five to 15 minutes walking distance to Palazzo Vittori, um, which was that academic building. Um, so it's pretty close by. And if you do know other students who are going, you can submit a roommate request as well. Typically, uh, four to six students share an apartment. And there are mostly shared bedrooms, um, but there are some single bedrooms available as well. Students can request a completely private apartment, um, but that does come at an additional cost. Um, so you just wanna reach out to me if you're interested in that. And lastly, we do also offer homestays with Italian families too. So especially if you're looking for that truly immersive experience or you're really wanting to work on your Italian language, um, that could be a really great opportunity for students. All right, so we offer a pretty wide range of courses. Um, the full list is available on our website. Um, so you can find a lot of info if you go to kent.edu slash Florence. There's also a lot of really good info through Webster's website too and the application page, so you can check there as well. But I've listed just some of the subject areas that we offer courses in. Um, I do wanna note that fashion, architecture, and interior design the courses in those areas are only available to students who are pursuing those programs. So unfortunately, um, a marketing or business student wouldn't be able to take a fashion course if they don't have the background or the degree in that subject. But for the most part, every other course is open to any student. So they really do range. We have a lot of courses in communications, um, in marketing and in history and art history. And then of course, Italian language and culture courses as well. Um, so I definitely would encourage you to go see the whole listing of courses. Um, some are very specific to Florence. Um, we have one course that's called uh, Florence, the myth of the city. And the entire course is spent walking around Florence and learning the history of the city. So you're almost never in the classroom for that course. And one other thing to note is that our courses do meet Monday through Thursday. So every week you do have um, a three-day weekend as well. 
All right. And then another way that we really structure our program to make sure that you're having these awesome, immersive, cultural and academic experiences is by tailoring different field trips and activities for students. Um, so we do offer programs both in the summer and the semester, and I'll talk about that briefly in the next couple slides. Um, but we do have mandatory field trips um, that are part of our program. So in the summer, all of our students go to Siena, Italy. And then during the semester, um, every student will have a list of um, academic field trips that they'll participate in. And those are dependent upon what your major is. So I have just a long running list here, but they do vary by major. So for example, business students typically um, take a field trip to Geneva and also to Milan and they visit different um, businesses and organizations and kind of get that inside look. Um, and so they're able to compare and contrast um, different business practices between the US and Italy or Europe. Um, we also have cultural activities. So these again vary every semester, but we always have a soccer team um, and we play against other US institutions who have campuses in Florence. Um, Kent State has never come up out on top, but we always try and it's a lot of fun. Um, we've also done river rafting on the Arno River. We always do an Italian cooking class. So just some extra activities um, that kind of introduce you to the culture and help you to kind of connect and bond with your fellow students as well. All right, and so just a few details about our program. So students can study abroad in the fall or the spring semester. So I've listed the dates for those programs there. I will note at this time that for the spring 2021 semester, so the semester upcoming, our program does look a little bit different than our traditional semester. So for spring 2021, we are doing a hybrid model for our program. Um, where the first eight weeks will be taught online through remote instruction. Um, and then if determined that students are able to travel to Florence, students will then depart for the second eight weeks and complete the semester in person. So if you have questions specifically about this upcoming spring, please let me know. Um, but otherwise, this is kind of the traditional structure of the program. Um, we have more details, like I said, about the different fees and courses and things like that on our website as well. So I won't go too in depth um, into those. Um, and then we do also offer a program in the summer. So that is our Florence Summer Institute. Um, this is a month long program. So it runs for the month of June. Um, and again, we have here listed um, the approximate fees um, with more details on our website as well. All right, so if you're interested in applying, um, definitely make sure that you have a conversation with your education abroad advisor. Um, you will start the application process through Webster University, um, and then there will be instructions on how to move forward to our Kent State application. Um, so students would apply to Kent State as a guest student um, and then complete the Kent State study abroad application as well. Um, I also have listed here some of the deadlines just as you're kind of planning. Um, for a future semester abroad, you can kind of see when those deadlines usually fall. So if you are interested in going for the fall 2021 semester, uh, the deadline would be April 15th of 2021. So always kind of the semester before as you're planning. And that is all I have. So um, I think we're holding questions until the end. Um, but I do have my contact information here and also the link to our specific spring 2021 hybrid semester um, that kind of breaks down some of the differences between the program for the spring 2021 semester versus an, a normal spring semester. So please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks, Christina. Um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and I'll turn it over to, to Mari. Uh, thank you, Tyler, and I thank you everyone for your attention. Uh, I represent JF Oberlin University. I'm located in Seattle right now, and uh, the university itself is about uh, 30 minutes from central uh, Tokyo and by express train and about 30 minutes to Yokohama. It's on the western edge of Tokyo Prefecture, so it's in a really convenient location. Um, here on this slide, you can see a photo of the main campus building and the building on the right with the white kind of tower. That's where 
a lot of the English language classes are taught. Um, and this in the springtime, a lot of these trees will be uh, blossoming as they are cherry trees. So uh, if you could go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, normally, JFOU, uh, JFO Rolling University, as I call it, JFOU, um, has a summer session. But right now, pending COVID situation, uh, we don't know if the summer session will be held. But um, it is a four-week program in July and approximately $3,500. Um, and you take... Uh, Students can take elementary Japanese, intermediate, or advanced Japanese, depending on their level. Um, and they also have the option of taking one or two English content classes in business or culture um, also. And uh, you don't need to have any kind of Japanese language background to attend this summer session. Uh, we hope to have an answer uh, about the summer session, hopefully by the middle of October. So it might be tough to plan for summer 2021, but we will certainly keep Tyler informed about that. Um, let's see the next slide, thank you. Uh, so Webster and JFOU have had a long relationship. Um, and so we have lots of information available to Webster, and I'll provide uh, PDFs of the latest exchange brochure. Um, students from Webster generally participate for a semester, sometimes for two semesters, and they would arrive for the fall semester roughly the end of August, and for the spring semester, they students would arrive at the end of March. Um, about the end of March, Hopefully the quarantine situation, COVID-19 will be settled and students will just simply go from the airport to campus. Right now, currently there is a 14 day quarantine period, self quarantine period for internationals. But um, again, hoping <laughs> that COVID-19 will be settled, that students again will just go straight to campus and you would be residing in campus dormitories, each student has a student a studio apartment that has a kitchenette, a bedroom, um, bathroom, uh, and so you would have to prepare your own meals. There is no meal plan, uh, but it's located right next to Fuchinobe train station, and then there is a bus, a shuttle bus, a free shuttle bus that takes you from Fuchinobe train station to the main campus. Uh, many of the classes are taught in another campus building located near the station, so which is a like a five minute walk from your dormitory. Uh, thank you. And the courses that uh, we have uh, are listed on the website and again that will be provided to Tyler. Uh, the cultural activities are, there's a variety, and here you can see a few photos of some of the things that are international, lots of festivals that occur in Japan, if you're familiar with Japanese culture. Um, here's a photo of one. Uh, these are some international students participating um, in a summer, uh, summer festival, August. This is for students who stay from between spring and stay through the fall. Uh, and a lot of times um, you can dress up with this jacket. It's like a cotton jacket and then you wear a tenui around your head and then you can see, uh, you can't see in this photo, but a lot of neighborhoods will have a little tiny um, kind of a, a float, but it's something that they carry on their shoulders and uh, students can help carry that around the neighborhood in a procession, which is fun to do. Um, of course, this mountain, I think most of you are familiar with what this, what this mountain is, Mount Fuji. And there are field trips to Mount Fuji, which is really not too far away from JFOU. Calligraphy is another thing that is very popular activity for students to learn. And here you can see a student studying calligraphy um, some students will spend a lot of time on this and will become quite proficient after a semester or two. Um, others will just uh, dabble and just learn what it's about. 
uh, in this last photo, this is a, a trip to, to participate in a tea ceremony, and this is outside. And, you, and many times you will see this kind of red umbrella and kind of a red bench, uh, a bench covered in what red felt, uh, which signifies that you can participate in a tea ceremony. And uh, we don't have a picture of the tea ceremony itself, but um, that's what this is. And this is just, these are just four of many activities that students do. So either a field trip with the other international students or interactions with Japanese students uh, who participate with you. Uh, JFOU also has a um, remote site, uh, kind of a, not really a resort, but in the Izu Peninsula where students can visit and enjoy kind of more traditional Japanese natural environment as well. And the next slide is life around campus. So students, there's lots of things to do walking distance from your dormitory. Um, one of my favorite stops that I make whenever I visit and get off at Fuchinobe train station is I immediately go to Corner Great <laughs> Cozy Corner Bakery. Um, it, they have delicious pastries for you. And about a 10 minute walk from Fuchinobe station is the, if you're interested in, in space, aerospace, there is a museum of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Um, it's like their NASA. And it's not very big museum, but um, you can spend quite a bit of time. Uh, the city of Machida, which is about a 10 minute train ride from Fuchinobi Station is the main station that you would go to to head over to central Tokyo. Uh, Machida has a lot of, it's kind of becoming sort of the next Akihabara. If you're familiar with Akihabara, it is a part of Tokyo that has a lot of the electronics, a lot of the manga, anime, that sort of um, uh, cosplay type of shopping. And Machida is becoming sort of the second location for that. And this, I haven't been to this graphic arts museum, but um, it is also located in that, in Machida again, about 10 minutes from your dormitory. Uh, there are various temples and shrines as well. And actually, met, most towns and cities in Japan have many temples and shrines that you can enjoy. Uh, the one thing that is interesting about Machida is there is a historic home that you can visit. And this was built, um, as you can see, it has the old style uh, thatched roof. Um, in fact, uh, quite a few, there aren't very many of these thatch roofed homes left in Japan as it is very expensive to maintain. But this is fun to try, go through. They also have a little cafe restaurant that, can, that you can visit. Uh, so there are lots of things to do within walking distance of um, Fuchinobi campus as well as Machida. And Machida has lots of shopping as well that I know is very popular with students. And there are many parks and, and other natural resources that you can enjoy. Um, I think that uh, it would be good to visit the JFOU website, um, which I will provide to Tyler for you to take a look at. And there, there are many courses that are taught in English. And there are also classes taught in Chinese as well, content classes that you can take in Chinese language. So you'll have the option to do classes in Japanese, classes in English, or classes in Chinese. Um, I look forward to your questions. And again, I'm in Seattle. So if you, if you need to speak to me, uh, feel free. I'm only two hours away, uh, time, to, time zone wise. And of course you can speak to Tyler. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, thanks Mari. Um, I'm gonna go uh, kind of, Quickly, um, a little bit in the interest of time, I, I do um, need to mission, so they, they weren't able to join us today, but we do have a second um, international partner, um, an exchange relationship with the university in Osaka. So we do have two um, options in Japan um, with Kansai University um, in Osaka. Um, so just a little bit about the academic programming um, in Osaka. So they have um, courses taught in English um, as well. Um, 
but they also offer level Japanese classes. So they have from level one to, to level six of Japanese. Um, so they, they offer a huge range of, of Japanese classes. We do um, tend to recommend students that go to, to Kansai to have had a few semesters of Japanese and be kind of a little bit more towards the, the intermediate um, level. Um, but you can see that they have um, content courses taught in English over here on the right that they divide their courses into like eight different modules. So um, food science and, and biotechnology, studies on foreign affairs, fundamentals, social science and studies. So there's a lot of courses that kind of fit into those um, modules. So um, students are able to go to Kansai University and, and take courses in, in English that transfer back to Webster's credits as well as um, Japanese language courses too. Um, so I will turn it over though. We will move move back to the continent of, of Europe, well, sort of, um, and we'll, we'll turn it over to, to Nat. That's, that's a dicey proposition Sorry. at the moment uh, in terms of, uh, <laughs> uh, as I'm sure you know. Um, but hi everyone, my name's Nat. Um, I'm a study abroad officer at the University of Roehampton. Um, uh, as Ty has mentioned, we're, we're partnered with Webster uh, for uh, semester programs in both the fall and the spring that map pretty closely to the US academic uh, year. Uh, so I'm gonna start off um, by just giving you a few key facts about Roehampton. I'll move on to the academic as well as uh, kind of cultural and social uh, aspects of the study abroad experience that we have on offer. Um, so um, the first thing uh, about Roehampton is, is we are a, a highly diverse uh, university that's very much reflective of the city that we are in. Uh, we have a undergraduate student body of about seven and a half thousand, um, uh, just over half of which uh, identifies students of color uh, and around 70% of which identifies female. Um, Whitelands College, uh, which is the oldest of our four colleges, uh, was actually the first higher education institution in the UK uh, to admit women uh, when it founded in 1841. Um, so we do have this kind of identity and, and mission of, of diversity and inclusion uh, really baked into to what Roehampton is, is all about. Um, as I mentioned, our four colleges uh, uh, do have their own kind of unique identity and traditions and you'll be assigned to one of them uh, when you arrive at Roehampton. Uh, they're sort of like houses. Um, and just a note on our teaching, um, Roehampton was awarded uh, a silver award in the most recent uh, Teaching Excellence Framework Survey in the UK, which recognises uh, a high standard of teaching and, and student outcomes at the university. Um, we're also the only traditional campus university in London. Uh, we have a beautiful 54 acre parkland campus in southwest London in one of the greenest areas of the city. Um, and I should mention that our campus is fully open uh, this, uh, from this September uh, with a blended learning approach uh, that's going to combine um, an offering of both online and uh, in person uh, socially distanced teaching and activities. Uh, we are also offering students, including study abroad students, the opportunity to study entirely online uh, this fall if they wish, um, or as I said, uh, to continue to attend uh, smaller group teaching sessions in person, and we'll obviously continue to review all of these precautions and policies moving forward. Um, the campus, um, in terms of our local area, is located right next to Richmond Park, uh, which is the largest public park uh, in London. And we're also next to uh, a lot of really fun and vibrant areas of the city like Putney, Clapham, uh, Wimbledon, uh, Tooting. Uh, all these neighbourhoods have loads to explore, lots of restaurants, uh, cultural activities and lots of things to get involved in. And we're also um, about 20 minutes by train uh, from the very heart of central London. Um, so students who come to study abroad with us uh, have the benefit of our close-knit uh, campus community where we have guaranteed accommodation uh, in, as I said, a really beautiful green and, and safe environment. Um, uh, but also with, um, with benefit of the full range of, of opportunities for the kind of cultural and social enrichment uh, of one of the most famous and historic and diverse cities in the world, uh, all right on your doorstep. 
Um, and as a study abroad student, you'll also have access to all the same services uh, and a fully integrated experience alongside other UK students. Um, we have a, a range of support services, including our disabilities team and well-being team uh, that can look after a lot of health and student welfare issues uh, while you're on campus. And we also have a student's union uh, that provides uh, a whole range of sports clubs, uh, student-led societies, and volunteering opportunities, uh, which includes our student-led food, food sustainability project, uh, which is called Growhampton, uh, which has allotments, a cafe, uh, and a chicken coop on campus, uh, which you can volunteer with and get involved. Uh, and in addition to that, we also have a dedicated study abroad team, uh, including myself, uh, who will provide guidance and support um, right from the application process all the way through to your arrival in the UK and your time at Roehampton and we obviously maintain uh, regular contact with the study abroad team at Webster um, to make sure you're, you're getting uh, all the support you need. Um, so on your screen right now uh, is a list of uh, an overview of the subjects we cover at Roehampton. As you can see, it's a really broad range of subjects, uh, so please do feel free to ask any questions about specific subjects. Um, the image you're looking at uh, right now is of our new library which opened in 2017. Um, uh, it's a kind of state-of-the-art building with 1,200 study spaces, 400,000 books, and a huge range of digital resources and archives. Um, uh, another new addition to our campus is our media centre. Uh, which is a 13 million pound development, uh, which has uh, a whole range of photo and vid video editing facilities, a film studio, uh, mock newsrooms, uh, resources for journalism students, digital media, uh, film and photography, uh, and a, a wider range of subjects besides that. Um, in terms of the academic experience, uh, as I said, you'll, uh, you'll be in classes uh, with both UK and full degree international students uh, and you'll be encouraged to, to really integrate with the wider student body at Roehampton. Um, a full course load uh, is uh, 60 UK credits a semester which usually works out about three or four classes uh, and you'll have the option to, to choose from pretty much any of the subjects on offer. Um, we do allow students kind of maximum flexibility, we don't make you stick to a particular subject um, obviously, it's, it's always important to uh, work with your academic advisor at Webster to make sure the classes you're taking will transfer back. Um, uh, so, as I said, most of the classes that we offer during the semester uh, will see study abroad students uh, integrated into regular classes with, with other UK students. However, we have created a handful of classes specifically for study abroad students, and these are our London Studies classes. Um, and uh, the classes on screen now are just some of the, um, the, the selection of classes that we run uh, every semester. Uh, they've been designed specifically by faculty at Roehampton in a way that um, allows us to make use of London uh, as a learning environment. Uh, so alongside in-class discussions, uh, you'll go on field trips uh, to locations around London. Uh, these might include uh, galleries and museums, theatre performances, uh, literary walking tours, uh, visits to Roman ruins and notable uh, uh, architectural landmarks. Um, and these classes really maximise and combine the um, really excellent academic, uh, social and cultural benefits of a, of a study abroad experience because you get uh, the chance to explore a, a historic global city uh, with a new group of classmates uh, and friends and then use that experience uh, to gain perspectives that you can contextualize in the classroom. Um, and our London Studies classes also brings me on to um, what's the one of the really exciting things uh, about your study abroad experience uh, which is that you'll be living in one of the best cities in the world. Um, there's uh, a kind of never-ending list of things to talk about about London, um, I think the really great thing uh, um, about the city is that uh, alongside the kind of landmark locations uh, that you'll be familiar with in the city centre, uh, around Westminster and the city of London, 
uh, the Houses of Parliament, Big Ben, um, all really amazing places that are, are definitely worth a visit. But there's also loads of smaller hubs of activity uh, spread all across the city that have, have loads to do. Um, and the strength of London is really its, its diversity and variation and the, the global outlook um, that's really embedded in, into its history and identity. Um, and I, one of the ways, uh, one of the things we've designed um, to really make the most of that is our social programme. Um, it's an optional package created uh, just for study abroad students. Uh, the kind of trips that will be on offer um, to study abroad students um, this spring will uh, depend somewhat on what COVID related restrictions are in place in public places and attractions. Uh, but generally, um, students have the chance to see famous landmarks. Uh, you might watch a West End show, uh, visit towns and cities uh, outside of London, like Oxford, uh, Windsor, Bath, uh, Stonehenge. Um, and all of these trips are led by a, a qualified guide uh, who'll provide a lot of background information and history on the places you visit. Um, so this is a really um, fantastic way um, to explore the city. It's included in your programme fee um, and it's a great way to make the most of um, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's a great way to kind of contextualise and find your way around London because I think while London can seem like a really big and daunting place to live at first, um, it's, it's, it's also a place that people have been, you know, coming to for 2000 years from all over the world and kind of carving out a space for themselves. Um, so, um, you know, consistently study abroad students find that there's always little niches for them to explore uh, and kind of find, find their place in London. Uh, and by the end of their experience, uh, students really do consistently tell us they feel like uh, almost like real Londoners. Um, and of course, we're always uh, happy to help uh, if you ever do feel a bit lost and confused and, uh, and wanting, to, wanting some tips uh, and advice on, on, on how to make sense of and explore London. Uh, all of the team live in London. I personally grew up in southwest London, uh, where our campus is based. So we're always happy to point you towards interesting and fun things to do. Um, so lastly, I'll just um, let you know that you can always contact us uh, through our email address on the screen now. Um, as I said, we work closely with the Webster team uh, throughout the application process and in the run up to your arrival. Uh, you'll begin your application process uh, through Webster uh, and they'll then uh, direct you onwards to our application system. Um, and you can always reach out to us at any point in the process uh, we support. Um, but thanks so much for your time uh, and looking, here, uh, looking forward to hearing your questions. Yeah. <clears throat> thanks, Nat. Um, yeah, I'll just go on um, quickly, like I mentioned before, that we do have a second partner in the UK who was not able to join us. Um, today. So um, we do have um, Oxford Brookes University is also a partner of Webster um, located in, in Oxford in England. I know one of the um, cities Nat mentioned is a place you can can visit very famous for for higher education, um, the city of the city of Oxford. Um, so located about in about an hour from from London. Um, Oxford Brookes is obviously not the is not the more famous university of, of Oxford, but it's a very famous um, university town um, where there's where there's tons and tons of, of students um, in kind of student culture and, and student life activity just um, in the town of, of Oxford with with easy access to to London um, they also have um, you know obviously being in the UK their their courses are taught in English um, so you do have kind of a wide range of, of academic options so you can see on on your screen there um, some of um, the way that they kind of divide up their their program, their academic programs. Um, so there's kind of a wide range of of academic opportunities for students who are interested in studying in uh, in Oxford. Um, but I really want to to turn it over. I know we heard from um, from Christina and and Mari and and Nat, and um, hopefully we have some people here that are maybe interested in studying in in Florence or in Tokyo or are in London and uh, wanna just turn it over to questions. I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop the recording